Hi, in this video, we're going to be discussing a very important topic asked in postgraduate medical entrance exams, sterilization and disinfection. So sterilization is the process of destruction of all forms of life, including spores. So it's an absolute phenomenon, killing all forms of life, whereas disinfection is the process of destruction of only the pathogenic microorganisms from inanimate objects. So sterilization is an absolute condition, while disinfection is not. Antisepsis is disinfection of live tissues, and father of antiseptic surgery is Joseph Lister, who introduced phenol during World War for skin antisepsis. So we start with order of susceptibility to methods of sterilization and disinfection. The most resistant are prions, followed by bacterial spores, followed by cysts of protozoa, followed by non-enveloped viruses, mycobacteria, fungi, gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria, and the le least resistant are, or rather the most susceptible to methods of sterilization and disinfection are enveloped viruses. So let's start with methods of sterilization and disinfection. First, we come talk about physical methods. Now, physical methods include heat, radiation and filtration. Heat can be used in two forms, dry heat and moist heat. So dry heat, how does it sterilize or disinfect? It denatures proteins. It damages or it brings about oxidative damage. And it raises the level of electrolytes to toxic levels. Now, dry heat can be used in the following forms. Flaming, that is, we can pass slides, cover slips or mouths of test tubes by passing them through the flame a few number of times and thereby disinfect them. Next is red heat. That is used for the effective sterilization of articles that can be heated to redness in flame. So we are sterilizing, we are making the object red hot and thereby sterilizing it. So straight wires, inoculating loops, searing spatulas and tips of forceps can be sterilized by red heat. Next is incinerator. This is the sterilization along with significant reduction in volume for final disposal of infectious hospital waste. Mm -hmm. So how much reduction in volume are we achieving? It is 80 to 85 percent reduction in volume. Now, infectious hospital waste which can be put in, in, in an incinerator are animal carcasses, human pathological material, soil beddings and dressings, and cytotoxic drugs. Now, in an incinerator, there are two chambers, a primary and secondary. The primary chamber is maintained at a temperature somewhere around between 650 to 750 degrees Celsius. And secondary chamber is maintained somewhere around 1050 to 1100 degree Celsius. Lastly, we move on to the hot air oven using dry heat. This was first introduced by Louis Pasteur and it is used for the effective sterilization of all metallic instruments, whether they be sharp or non-sharp. So forceps, scissors, scissors scalpels, etc. All glassware, test tubes, pipettes, petri plates, etc. Cotton swabs and oils, jellies, powders and waxes. Now that is very important, oils, jellies, so paraffin oil is sterilized by petroleum jelly, dusting powders, how they are sterilized? They are sterilized by hot air oven. Now temperature in a hot air oven, most often that is used is 160 degrees Celsius for one hour, but we can also use 150 degrees Celsius for about two hours or 170 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes. Now, efficacy of a hot air oven can be sterilized by three methods, physical, chemical, or biological. Physical meaning we are putting a temperature chart recorder and reading, reading it at the end of the cycle. Chemical method is using Brown's tube number three. And biological method is using spores of either Clostridium tetani or using the spores of Bacillus subtilis. So chemical method is Brown's tube number three and biological method is spores of Clostridium tetani or spores of Bacillus subtilis. Now moist heat, after dry heat we move on to the moist heat. How does it kill? It denatures and coagulates proteins. Now moist heat can be used in three temperatures below 100, at 100 or 100, above 100 degree Celsius. Now moist heat less than 100 degree Celsius, classical example of this is pasteurization which is used for disinfection of milk. 
Now, pasteurization can be used in the following me methods, holder, flash or ultra high temperature method. Holder method is when we are using moist heat at 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Flash method is using moist heat at 72 for 15 to 20 seconds, followed by rapid cooling to temperatures less than 13. And ultra high temperature is moist heat at 149 degrees Celsius for 0.5 seconds. How do we test the efficacy of pasteurization? We have two methods, coliform test and the phosphatase test. Now, in coliform method, what we are doing is we are basically testing for the presence of coliforms like Escherichia coli, Klebsiella and Enterobacter. Now, coliforms which are normally present in raw milk are easily destroyed by pasteurization and their present in pasteurized product usually indicates that it is inadequate pasteurization. So, what we do is we take our pasteurized milk sample and we add it to the McConkey broth and overnight incubation, we are going to look for presence of acid or gas. So, if coliforms have been effectively destroyed by pasteurization, there should be no acid and gas that should appear in the McConkey broth. Next test is the phosphatase test. Phosphatase is an enzyme which is normally present in raw milk and it gets inactivated when the proper time and temperatures reach for pasteurization. So, in this test, what we do is we take our pasteurized milk sample and we add a substrate for the phosphatase enzyme. That substrate is disodium phenyl phosphate. So, after two hours of incubation, since phosphatase enzyme has already been denatured, there is no change in color of disodium phenyl phosphate because the phosphatase enzyme is missing. So, no change in color indicating effective pasteurization. So, we get two types of question, which is the co most common method for testing the efficacy and which is the best method. Best method is the coliform test and most commonly used is an easy to do test, which requires just few hours of incubation. That is the phosphatase test. Next is serum bath. So, sera or body fluids containing coagulable proteins can be sterilized by heating for one hour at 56 degrees Celsius in a water bath for several days. Vaccine bath is used for inactivating non-sporing bacteria for preparing vaccines and here the temperature is moist heat at 60 degrees Celsius for one hour for several consecutive days. Moist heat, another example is inspissation. Inspissator using moist heat at 80 to 85 degrees Celsius for one hour for three consecutive days. And egg or serum containing media like LJ medium, Loeffler serum slope are sterilized by inspissation. For inspissation, the basic principle is the first exposure kills the vegetative forms and when we leave it for the next day, the intervals between that heating is going to lead to germination of the spores which are then killed by subsequent killing. Lastly, we have temperatures, uh, uh, moist heat being used in tindalization, which is also called as fractional sterilization. Here we are using moist heat at 100 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes for three consecutive days. Tindalization is done in a Koch and Arnold steam sterilizer and it is used for the sterilization of sugar solutions, gelatin containing media, TCBS, XLD, DCA and selenite F broth. That was moist heat at 100 degrees Celsius. Lastly, we have moist heat above 100 degrees Celsius, classical example of which is autoclave. The principle of an autoclave is we are using saturated steam under pressure. Now, the basic principle is that generally water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressures. But when water is made to boil under pressure, at under raised pressures, then it boils at a higher temperature. Now, depending upon the pressure in an autoclave, there are two types of an autoclave. One is, which is most often used, is using moist heat at 121 degrees Celsius. Here, the pressure inside the autoclave is 15 pounds per square inch. The other autoclave is when the pressure inside is 30 pounds per square inch. Here, the water is boiling at 134 degrees Celsius. So, steam that is generated is at 134 degrees Celsius and this needs to be kept for just 3 minutes. So, here, is the, here are the various components of an autoclave. It's the, the vessel is made up of either stainless steel or gunmetal. It has a perforated tray for steam entry. Below the perforated tray, there is a heating element. We are going to add water, which is going to heat the water and generate steam from it. 
the, the on the perforated tray, we're going to place all the objects. Then there is a lid with a discharge tap, a pressure gauge, and a safety valve. Now, what, what is the use of an autoclave? It can be used for sterilization of metallic instruments, which are non-sharp, microbiological culture media, plastic containers, pipettes, and tubes. Efficacy of an autoclave can be tested by physical method, temperature chart recorder, Chemical method is using Brown's tube number one, or we can use Bowie Dick tapes. And biological method is using the spores of Bacillus stereothermophilus. So chemical method is Brown's tube number one and Bowie Dick tapes, and biological method is using spores of Bacillus stereothermophilus. That was using heat, dry heat or moist heat. Dry heat. Oxidative damage, raising the level of electrolytes to toxic levels and denaturation of proteins, whereas moist heat by just acting denaturation and coagulation of proteins. Physical methods, next one is radiation. We can use radiation in two forms, non-ionizing or ionizing. Non-ionizing, the classical example is ultraviolet rays, which are generated by tungsten filament mercury lamps. The wavelength of UV rays used for this purpose is 220 to 280 nanometers. UV rays it has a disadvantage. They have very poor penetrating power and do not kill spores. So they are only used for surface disinfection of hospital corridors, hospital wards or laboratories or for biosafety hoods. So since they have no penetrating power, they are only used for surface disinfection. Next type of radiations are ionizing radiations. <clears throat> These classical example of this is gamma rays. The use of gamma rays is also called as cold sterilization. And these are generated by the nuclear disintegration of radioactive isotopes, cobalt or, cobalt or cesium. Mechanism of action of gamma rays is by causing DNA damage. These are highly penetrating and they even kill spores. So they would be sterilizing rays. Now, gamma rays are used for the sterilization of disposable syringes, gloves, petri plates, hormones, glassware, fabrics, cardiac implants and pacemakers, orthopedic implants, sutures, IV cannulas, as well as Foley's catheter. And efficacy testing of gamma radiation is done by spores of Bacillus pumilus. Next physical method is using filtration. These are used for removing microbes from solutions which are heat sensitive. So serum, antibiotic solutions, sugar solutions, urea solutions and vaccines. When we want to remove the microbes, we are going to use filtration. Now, pore size of standard bacterial filters range from 0.2 to 0.45 microns. So when we want to just filter out the bacteria from this heat sensitive solution, we are going to use though that pore size. That is the range of bacterial filters. But if it is just asked as a single value, generally standard bacterial filters have a pore size of 0.45 microns. The various types of filters used are earthenware filters which are made up of either porcelain or diatomaceous earth. These are shaped in the form of candles and examples of these include mandler filters and pasture chamber land filters. Mandler and Pasteur Chamberlain filters. Asbestos filters are made up of magnesium trisilicate and these are shaped in the form of discs, examples of which is seats filters. Next type of filters are sintered glass filters which are made by fusion of powdered glass. Again, they are shaped in the form of discs. And lastly, we have most commonly used presently membrane filters which are either made up of cellulose esters or polycarbonate. These membrane filters are of two types depending upon how the pores have been produced in the membrane. Capillary pore where the pores are produced by radiation and labyrinthine pore that is made here the pores are being made by forced evaporation of solvents. Example of membrane filters are millipore. Presently these are the most commonly used filters. This is the first part of sterilization and disinfection that is the physical methods. Thank you.